Hey guys, once again, uh, thank you for tuning in. This is another edition of the Therapy Room. We certainly hope you guys are doing safe, doing sound. And of course, uh, if you haven't already, head on down to our YouTube channel, subscribe, leave, leave a comment, like. Let us know how you find the show. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as well. So do head on down, share the love with your friends, guys. Let us know what you feel about the show. And of course, uh, spread the love with your friends. On today's episode, I'm very happy to have a close buddy of mine. Uh, we were supposed to do this show on the 13th of February, but uh, I got COVID and we had to reschedule it. And uh, today we've got the man in the house. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, live and loud right here in the therapy room. <laughs> Please welcome Eddie, also known as DJ Small, right here in the therapy room, guys. Come, bro. Come, come. Don't shy, don't shy, don't shy, don't shy. Come, come, come. Bro, thank you very much for coming to the therapy room. I know we rescheduled this show, uh, but you are here today and uh, we can't wait to hear you. I haven't seen you in the longest of time, right? There's only one rule here in the therapy room. We keep it real, we keep it raw, we just talk cock only, bro. Don't worry about anything. We have fun on the mic, we talk about olden day story and whatever not. Uh, my first question, bro, as always, what has been keeping you busy for the past, I don't know, man, how many months has it been since nightlife closed? Almost two years, right? What has been keeping you busy, man? A lot of time, I I spend more time at home, uh, and also uh, give me more time to be with my parents. And at the same time, uh, it's good also to to step back and reflect what's going on and what have you done the past one year, two year with or without COVID mm. to see what is your next focus or like or what can I do next. Mm. But of course, the COVID have also brought a lot of uh, inconvenience. Mm. We cannot party, we got no music, mm. drinking stop at 10.30. Ah. But, you know, it's just part of it. We just have to live with it. Mm. Yeah. So the name's small. I know you as Eddie. La. I, let me share with you guys uh, an interesting story, guys. The first time I ever met Eddie, <laughs> I was refreshing his memory just now. <laughs> I was a little kid and I was booked to play in Attica 2 for a private party. Me and Milan. I, Milan, I hope you watch this show and you remember... And I brought my Scratch Breaks vinyl and uh, I stepped into Attica 2 and I think Thomas was the sound guy, right? Thomas, right? Thomas was back then and I asked him, I said, yo man, is it cool if I use this side of the turntables because I just want to scratch a bit? He's like, yeah, go ahead. And while I was practicing small, Eddie walked into the console and straight away shouted at me and said, yo bro, what are you doing using my stylus? You don't have your own stylus, is it? Right, and I, I was shocked because I was a kid, it was there for me to use, so I just used Sunila, bro. And then you were like, Hey, no, you if you want to use, you, you bring your own stylus and all that. So, my question to you, are, bro, how important is this discipline? Do you think the younger generation know about all this? How important is discipline in the DJ booth? I think first of all, you, you, you probably need to know that every gear that you use in the club are all uh, personalized to the to the resident DJs, mm. giving the respect that you're walking to their booth. Mm. You know, it's just like you're going to someone's house. Yep, yep. Hey, I'm going to, can you offer me a drink? Can I ask for a drink? Or, hey, bro, is it okay that I can touch your own table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and also being a DJ is sort of good practice to bring your own headphones, bring your own gear. So that if anything go wrong, you would have a spare, sty spare stylus or anything headphones or anything spare, like, you know. But this is this is really funny. Like, f to me, most of the time I go for my own gigs, I will try to bring my own stuff. I will try to bring a pair of stylus. I will bring two pairs of headphones or anything that I have. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but sorry. Uh, <laughs> you <really Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> bro, ever since that day, I shit you not, uh, bro. I carry two laptops. Two, uh, I used to bring two Serato box around, bro. <laughs> because I worry that the club don't let me use. And thank you, because from there I learned. And now when DJs come without stuff, uh, I feel completely the same way you do. Like, hey, bro, if you are turntablist, bring your own on your or your own slip mat, your own stylus, everything. Lah, uh, you know? Back then I was young, I walked into it, I was like, hey, fuck it, lah, <laughs> just play only. So, bro, I need some history because I've never asked you this question before. Firstly, how did Eddie choose the name DJ Small? I think you got to tell me because of your small size. But no, <laughs> I'm sure there's a story behind it. And how did your journey start, man, bro? How did you go into music? Where did you play? What was your musical influence? Because everybody knows you from Attica to uh, Zook. You were at CMPB for a while. So I remember we did some events together. But how did this all start? And how did you eventually say that, hey, 
my name should be DJ Small, man. You know. Uh, well, the the whole DJ Small thing came came out of the blue, and uh, a lot of people know me as Eddie. And it's like, oh, that small guy, that small fella, that petty fella. Uh, I was also away from Singapore for a period of time. Uh, I spent almost four years in Beijing, mm. and uh, it didn't happen until I saw the Heineken Thirst mm. DJ competition, and I'm like, "Hey, something interesting! Like something that maybe I want to try or something." So uh, it just occurred to my mind, like, because during that time, a lot of people were using all sorts of moniker name, mm. DJ this, DJ that, whatever, whatever. So to me, it's just to be a little bit more different. So. I felt like the small name is very significant, mm. and previously people like who is that guy? Yeah, the Chinese boy uh, the sm- ah, that fellow, the small small fellow, right? So I always been described that way, mm. and uh, when I decided to join the competition, I was like thinking hmm, maybe I should come up with a name, mm. and I decided to use DJ Small. Mm. So at the same time, you probably represent all of, like you know Singapore is a small country. You got this small this fellow DJ, blah blah blah, etc. But also at the same time, it's just to bring something out of the ordinary. Like wow, I didn't know that you were the fella. Mm. And a lot of people are like, who is this DJ Small? See, you keep people wonder like, who is this DJ? Or you know, imagine if Daft Punk is not wearing the helmet, mm. you will, everybody will know Daft Punk. Yes. It's it's something that a di- identity that you create. Uh. So from then, uh. I kind of like it and I established the, that that style. Mm. So how I got started was back then in school, we were in mobile disco. Uh, I hang out a lot with Andrew Chow. Mm. We, we, we grew up together. And uh, yeah, we started from there, our weekend gigs, playing birthday party or whatever, what's not. Uh, it didn't occur to me to become a full-time DJ until I completed my full-time NS. Mm. And the opportunity came when I got to play for the warehouse full time, and uh, it was also I was also working with Journey Promotion back then. Mm. So uh, yeah, warehouse was actually the first stop for me as a club DJ. Yeah. Then after that, you moved on to Attica, is it? Uh, <coughs> uh, Attica was quite a long time after because warehouse was like still early in the eighties, nineties, and in between then we have other super clubs like Spark, Spire. Uh, a lot more Barracuda, Marina Bay, uh, people that I worked with along that line. Zoo was also starting to boom during a time in the early 90s. Uh, I also worked in smaller clubs, like small, like back then in Muhammad Sultan, and we were talking yeah, earlier, yeah. like, you know, all this uh, Buddha Bar, at East Side, all the Tachie and everybody. Uh, Atika came only shorter, uh, much later, uh, like, in the mid year 2005, 2006, after the competition and everything, I guess the door opened up for me mm. um, to get into uh, DJing, which I see that something that I can do. Uh, I mean, winning the competition, everybody would love to win the competition, but it gets it opened up the door for me, oh, and then you just need to focus at what you want to do next. Yeah. We talk about DJ competitions and. Uh, Recently, Reactivate Asia had a DJ competition. And it's all changed now, uh, bro. It's not like DMC. It's not like Red Bull 3 Star. And prop, big up to Heineken Thirst, right? Back then, they threw Heineken Green Room Thirst. They had DJ DJ competitions. In your opinion, bro, is it important for a uh, up-and-coming, rising DJ? Should I take part in a DJ competition? Is it important? Or do I just play in my bedroom, try and score a gig? Uh, in your opinion, bro, should I? Like, let's just say I'm 16, 17, so I'm coming up. That's a DJ competition. Should I join? Uh, in my opinion, I think yes. Mm. Because there's no reason why it should stop you from doing. Mm. Uh, whether is it, it's going to score you a gig, mm. get you a, a $1,000 gig. Mm. But if it's something that, that you feel like you want to do, apart from playing inside the bedroom where no one is listening to you, Having a competition, it's also challenging yourself to be exposed. You get to know people. Mm. You get to know the community. Mm. People get to know you. Mm. It's not that you are enclosed alone. That you know. Uh, that's why you see. Don't talk about DJing. I mean, all kind of competition, Olympics and all. It's about coming together. Mm. We show our strength. Mm. We, we we show our talent. We show our skill. And then from there, we can work in in a way like either collaborate mm. or we work together. You know, Whichever that makes things works, lah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's also a, 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 a learning process. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that if I won a competition, I'm really a winner. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. it's still a learning process. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, this a, a, a lot more things behind it. Uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation. You look at all the three, all the DMC champion, Andrew Chow alone. Mm. It's all the hard work. All the three-time champion and whatever scratching DJ. It's all the hard work. It's it's about what you want to do. Yeah. Nice man. Congratulations. I never knew you were a winner, bro. Thank you for telling me. Bro, one of the important things we, we tap on here, I was sharing with you earlier, the therapy room is about bringing our friends, our brothers from the entertainers, entertainment industry here into the room, talk, talk, chit-chat, make them feel better. Everybody is going through a very tough time at the moment. We don't know when the fuck things are going to open. You know, the, the government is doing their own thing and uh, respects to them. You know, they are taking it slow. Nightlife has been shut. Clubs have been shut. Live entertainment has been shut. Me and you have been playing in front of a wall uh, for the past uh, uh, camera wall, uh, green screen uh, for a <laughs> for the past two years, right? How was it for you, man, when, when we were hit with all these restrictions and nightlife uh, was shut, you couldn't play anywhere. Some of our brothers have gone through a very down period. They are not even digging music at the moment and I hope to ignite them with this small little gesture. But Everybody has a different journey, you know. Some went to depression, some... I don't know, man. I've heard so many stories. How was it like for you, bro? Uh, I think, <coughs> importantly, is you don't stop there. Mm. Because when you stop there, it's just like you feel like you're, you're not going to move forward anymore. Mm. And it's also a way for you to reflect on yourself. Like, yes, even with or without the COVID situation, uh, like entertainment industry has been shut down but it's not the end of the world yet we can still do something i mean like what you guys are doing now with the therapy room uh it's also a good way to share the music aloud to your own personal audience uh like i i during the covid i was also you know caught caught in my state of mind and uh, what i want to do so i started to fi- to mess around my house i have my, I have my own studio gear at home, my turntable. So I started streaming as well. Mm. Just to just to play music. And then people were like, hey, that there's a fella, this is one is on Facebook Live or whatever. At least it gave that spirit of the moment that people are like, ah, oh, mm. at least we got something. Mm. Even for one hour or two hours. But it's about you. Mm. Why? What you want to do. It's all about sharing like, okay, I'm just gonna play a set of music. Maybe is it a disco, electro, whatever, techno, you're gonna call it. As long but as you as long as you know that, you know, you are bringing something to people like, you know, like, hey, wow, at least these guys are doing something like, at least keep us entertained, even there's some music. Uh, we don't hear it in the club, but we can still hear it online when they go live. Yeah, yeah you can still get ready to buy a six-pack beer, just chill at home, yeah, jam for four hours, yeah. go live. It's good enough. And people out there, when you throw house parties, you can... Tune in to DJ Small's uh, YouTube channel or the therapy room whenever we have new content. Play it in the background, put on your speakers and have fun. Uh, listen to the music that we are dishing out. Bro, we spoke earlier in the room when you first came talking about progression as a DJ. You know, how you have to think forward and you cannot be a DJ. I would say lah, in Singapore at least, I, I feel this way. Don't mind me if I'm wrong guys, but this is how I feel. Uh, you cannot be a DJ all your life. A club resident DJ. We spoke about it earlier. You need to find a way to maneuver out of it. Or like some people go into management, some people go into this. You yourself, you know, you have found a pretty dope uh, day job. You're still DJing on the side. Why can't we be DJs for the rest of our lives, bro? I think that's a very big question. Uh, coming to the fact that I don't know if either is it sound right or sound wrong. Mm. We are still in Asia. You are not like somewhere in the Europe or or DJs in the, in the Japan market or where everybody has an opportunity that can go far as a DJ, producer, uh, record label or anything. But the thing is for us, in Singapore, the community is just too small. So a lot of chances are just very slim. You just need to fight for it for yourself. And if you think that you're going to DJ like being big out there, you just have to get out of Singapore. Uh, you can do it elsewhere, Europe, in, in Japan. You just need to venture out. Uh, of course, production, producing helps you get your name out. But if you are someone like, like me, I, I can only DJ. I mean, I don't have any production skill. But let me out here editing, play fun, fun around. Yes, I can. But uh, like I said, the, the elements are too, too limited. 
you know, we are still a very small city. It's just like if a 12 inch pizza, there's only this much of ingredients that you can throw in there, and everybody wants all the ingredients. So, yeah, you just need to know what you want for yourself. Oh. But still, don't give up DJing. Whether you're 60 years old, 70 years old, grab a pair of decks, call your friends over, and have fun. Bro, we were speaking about when we first started DJing, how our parents dealt with it. <laughs> right? It's, it's nice to touch on. Like, you know, you, you were the one who actually asked me, hey, your parents got ever come to your gig before? And I'll be very honest with you, one of the proudest moments of my life, right, bro, is when my mom came, when we broke the Guinness World Record, Singapore DJs came together, and when we were about to lift the trophy uh, or that award, I brought my mom to the dance floor for the first time. I clearly remember some house remix of YMCA was being played, and my mom and me were doing the YMCA while Singapore was crowned, you know, the longest re DJ relay session. How was it like for you, man? Like, when you first told your parents, hey... Ma, Dad, I want to be a DJ. Eh? How did they take it? As a matter of fact, I didn't tell them I wanted to be a DJ. Mm. I just DJ. Mm. I mean, of course, parents look at it in a different way. Mm. I mean, you're working in a club, alcohol, cigarette smell, and everything, late nights, come back 2-3 o'clock, whether you're drunk or you're too drunk. They still have the kind of perception like, why are you in this nightclub industry? Mm. Well, maybe the, the perception start changing when you when you're trying to show them that, hey, look, what I'm doing is actually not that bad. Mm. Okay, a bit of achievement, playing probably on the best club or whatever. Uh, my mom actually ever go dancing in Zoo before. She went to Velvet before. Uh, my dad always like, oh, my son is very busy. He always go here, go there, travel to buy China here and there, always all the gig and all, uh, like, you know. Uh, I guess it's also, they probably re realize that DJing is not that bad. It's just like, if you're going to tell someone, oh, I'm a karaoke DJ, then people are like, huh, karaoke DJ? Then what kind of job is that karaoke yeah. DJ? Is it still the same, like you play music, you put music, alcohol, drunk? So as time goes by, they see what you do, right? Then they tend to understand. Yeah. If you had a kid and your kid told you that, I want to be a DJ, how? Go ahead. If my, my kid want to tell me, say, I, I want to go skateboard, go, okay, go break a bone and come back. <laughs> there always seemed to be a stigma around being a DJ. I mean, like, when I joined, my uncles and aunties out there used to say, hey, this fellow playing music for people wedding. You know, and if you become a steward, people say, hey, you, you are a waiter in the skies and all. Everybody has something to say. Not Even a banker has... some. If you are a banker, they will say, hey, oh, you're a banker, wanker, all this kind of nonsense thing. Bro, you have played in some of the biggest clubs in Singapore, in the world. Eddie, as DJ Small, has created a legacy. Moving forward, bro, what is the plan? Let's just say five, ten years from now, musically, where do you want to see yourself? Well, this is something also quite big. Uh. Because the thing is, for DJs, if you are a DJ, whether is it now, before or after, the only main thing important is to keep on playing music. Whether regardless of... Uh, what's going to happen whether do you get a gig or do you not get a gig or if you're asking me yes I will still continue to play mm. if there's opening gig I will still look forward to travel to play some nearby cities uh, you know and yeah to get in touch with all my friends over the world like you know uh, some of the nice people that I worked with before even locally uh, to see them and you know even just to to collaborate to come out to, to do something yeah, because it's in you. Mm. It's just like you're just telling the kid to stop playing. The kid cannot play anymore. Mm. So for DJ, I think we just have to be out there. It's about playing music. It's now is how can we do it? Mm. That's about it. Yeah. Also, bro, I feel that we should be relevant. You know, people should know who you are. If you stop playing music, right? I mean, in future, there are a lot of people there just waiting for a gig to drop in front of their laps while they are not doing anything. They are not streaming. They are not digging music. So I, I feel like relevance is very important. You know, you need to be relevant. You need to be on social media. Now that's the trend. Lah. We were talking about it earlier. Back then, it's just SMS. Hey, bro, I'm playing here. All the DJs gather together at Mama Sultan. Bro, I haven't heard you in the longest of time. The last was we did an event. I cannot say which event is it due to... Uh, uh, NDA uh, <laughs> regulations, but yes, I managed to share the decks. Social yeah, social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I managed to jam with you and it was weird because I was tasked to play like an EDM and you were playing house and you rocked it, bro, right, right after me with whatever you did. What can we expect from you today in the therapy room? Did you plan a set for the therapy room? Um, I didn't really plan a set for the therapy room, but I just go through some certain playlists of what uh, fits well and uh, also to look into playing something a little bit different. And as you know that, we hasn't been playing much out for the past two years. Uh, a lot of people probably didn't get to hear different kind of genre of music apart of what they hear from the radio. Or they hear like, oh, I haven't heard this DJ play for so long. Why is he playing something different? But that doesn't make me change. It's just, uh, you just have to be diversified a little bit with your music selection. And as long as you, it's not something that's too uh out of the way of like you know you just need to understand the concept like okay therapy room what i'm gonna do am i gonna do house techno rock or hip-hop r&b or whatever so i just find something that is smoothing nice like maybe writing and not too hard on people mm. and yeah so i had a hard time selecting my track as well you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you had more time la, huh? yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, we gave you a one-month extension uh, because we cancelled the show, right? <laughs> but bro, thank you very much for coming by to the therapy room, man. We can't wait to hear you. I'm sure guys on our Facebook Live can't wait to hear you. And if you watch the YouTube Live as well, uh, your friends will share this. And of course, I hope they leave a nice positive comment. And I hope you drop the track list in our comments as well to let people know what you're going to play. Uh, so without further ado, guys, live and loud right here, introducing a very close buddy of mine, Eddie, also known as DJ Small. Before I bring him on set, if you haven't already liked us on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, do do it. You're also on Instagram. Uh, you're also on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube as well, right? Yeah. And you do like some live streams. Do you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, I, I, I during the COVID, I was also just messing around, learning how to stream. So uh, I have my own mix cloud page that I try to put some music out on a regular basis, even though we are not playing out. But at least it gives you a chance to express yourself that you can share music to a general audience. Mm. Uh, I started a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Small is Big. Uh, some of my previous uh, live stream is also there. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Nice. Yeah. Do support. Small is Big, right? On YouTube. Do support. Of course, do support us as well. This uh, video that you see at the end will be posted both on our socials. So uh, thank you for the support, guys. Right about now, live and loud right here in the therapy room, bringing on my buddy, Eddie, also known as DJ Small, live and loud right here in the therapy room.
Hey guys, once again, thank you very much for tuning in. That was the sounds of my buddy Eddie, you know, and his DJ Small. He's also got his own YouTube channel, so do support. If you haven't already, head on down to our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Do like, subscribe, share the love with your friends, guys. Cheer with me for the next episode. Stay safe, stay sane. Peace out.